the goal of today's lesson is to visualize data using three different types of plots. Today we worked on a dot plot, a stem and leaf plot, and a histogram. So the dot plot is pretty simple. You just make a number line that spans from the smallest value to the largest value. And then you can go through, so the first number in this data set was a four. So you go to the four on your number line and you add a dot. And it, it doesn't have to be a dot. It could be a smiley face. It could be a square, just some symbol. And then the next value was a two. So you would put a dot above the two. And then there's another two. So you, can, you start to stack your dots. So this is useful because it allows you to just see how the data is spread out. It allows you to see sort of the shape of the data. And the actual data itself is preserved because I could recreate this data set and then put the numbers in order based on the dot plot. A stem and leaf plot is kind of similar. Um, you take your data and you think about place value. So the stems are typically um, place value and then the leaves are like the maybe the, the tens digit and the ones digit, for example. So the, the tens digit might be the stems and the leaves would be the place value, the, the ones digit. So a nine would go with a stem of zero and a leaf of nine. An eight, same thing, a stem of zero and a leaf of eight. The 21 has a stem of two and a leaf of one. And so you create this plot. And so it's similar to a dot plot. I can actually see every value in the data set. Zero, one is a one. Um, one, eight is an 18. Two, three is a 23 and so on. And so in bold here, it says a key is required because with a stem and leaf plot, um, it, it's the, the decimal point is not clear. So for example, this could be a 2, 1, could be a 21, or it could be a 2.1, or it could even be something like 210, depending on how the, the uh, place value of these numbers are. So you always, every time you make a stem and leaf plot, you want to include a key. And so by key, something like this, just interpret one value. Zero bar nine stands for zero nine. And finally, uh, well, real quick, a, a split stem stem and leaf plot is something else you can make. Um, instead of having one stem for each of them, you split it into two. And then the leaves zero through four would go in the first stem and five through nine would go in the second stem. So I'm you would do that if you have a larger data set and you, instead of having like a skyscraper of leaves, you can kind of split it so you can see the shape a little bit better. All right, so finally a histogram. I think of a histogram as breaking the data into different bins. And if these could even be like little buckets. So one bucket is labeled 40 to 45. Another bucket is labeled 45 to 50 and so on. And you would take each piece of each data and write it on like a piece of paper and throw it into one of the buckets. And then the histogram displays how often, which is frequency, how often each bucket occurred. So there were between 40 and 45, there were three numbers. Between 45 and 50, there were three numbers and so on. So that's what a histogram is doing. A histogram is much more general. You can, is if it's quantitative data, a histogram is a great tool to be able to display it because you could display 10,000 numbers. The frequency just becomes um, scaled differently. It's very robust. Um, one question that might be asked is, at least with the way this is set up, well, 40 to 45 goes here and 45 to 50 goes here. Well, what if I have exactly 45? Where would it go? So here is just a rule of thumb that if something lands on one of the boundaries, you put it in the higher class, so the bar to the right. So we'll just follow that. So that way we're consistent and there's always a place for a number to go. And then the last thing, we're allowed to see the shape by making these different displays. And so there are common labels we attach to shapes. So there are symmetric distributions, skewed left distributions, skewed right distributions, and so on. So learning these shapes, this is the first time we've seen them. This will be um, common by the end. It'll, you'll just be, it'll be second nature. The one that I want to point out here is the skewed left and the skewed right. So the, the skew is following the tail. We call this the tail of the distribution. So in a skewed left distribution, the tail is on the left side. In a skewed right distribution, the tail is on the right side. 